My name is Bianca Salazar, and you're now tuned in with Real Talk with Petey Mac. I'm back! What's up, fans? It's your boy Peter Mac. I'm back at the maze. I'm sorry about that, y'all. School has been very hectic. I was I was sick for about a week or two. You know, terribly sorry. As you can see, there has been some changes. I'm in the comfort of my living room now. <laughs> and my hair, you know, I got a mohawk. Let y'all get up there and see that. You know. It's back in the building like I told you guys that it would be, you know. And man, you know, it's been a lot of things going on in the world since I last talked to y'all, you know what I'm saying. Um, Shamu went on a killing spree, you know. Killed a lady at SeaWorld in Orlando, Florida. And they said that's like the third person that that Shamu has killed in 20 years. And which scares me because I went to go see Shamu around about 1993 when I was four years old. So that means he killed somebody before I got there. I was around the animal that was dangerous. Nobody told me. You know what I'm saying? It happens, though. Um, you know, crazy things are going on in the, in the uh, sporting world, as usual. Um, Tiger Woods had an interview and apologized again. Tiger, I don't know why you keep apologizing. You do something that men, millions of men do every day. And no, it's not going to help you get your endorsements back. You're not fooling anybody. We know why you keep apologizing. It's not going to happen. Kind of like what Dave Chappelle said. Tough break. That's always FUBU. Um, you know, Ben Roethlisberger got accused of sexually harassing a girl, you know. San Antonio Holmes, he threw a bottle, a glass or something at a woman, hit her in the ass and almost messed her up. He said he'll take care of it personally, which means he's going to pay the woman. We already know. You know, I don't know what's going on with the Steelers, but I guess that's what happens. That's how you roll. That's how they roll up there in um, Steel Town. You know. And in the NCAA tournament news, I'm very mad at the Georgetown Hoyas. I just want to let you guys know that to get put out the first round by Ohio, very unacceptable, Georgetown. John Thompson the third. What is going on in D.C.? You know, big ups to Greg Monroe and Chris Wright and Austin Freeman and everybody else on the Hoyas uh, roster. You guys did your thing, but I'm going to need you guys to do better next year. But I'm also happy about the NCAA tournament because the Duke Blue Devils are in the Final Four for the first time since 2004, baby. Yes, sir, I am a Cameron crazy, and you better know it, you know. Which brings me to the topic for today's episode. I'm speaking sports. Yes, I am. Sorry, ladies. I got to do it. Um, I want to talk about, after viewing this tournament this year, I would like to talk about how NCAA basketball is, is way better than NBA basketball. I mean, it was once upon a time in NBA basketball, you can watch the games and see jaw dropping moves, you know, things, shots that'll make you take a double take, like what just happened, you know. But those days are long gone, you know. Nowadays, I mean, it's just like they look like they're out there warming up nowadays. I mean, the last ex memorable scene of the NBA that I remember was 2004 Western Conference Finals when Derek Fisher. Threw up that shot with, with four tenths of a second left that helped keep the Lakers in the, in the um, championship run. You know, they, they end up beating the Spurs and end up advancing to the championship, only to lose to Detroit Pistons. But that's the only memorable, um, memorable moment in NBA history in the 2000s to me. Now, you got your own opinion, but to me, that was the only memorable one. You know, I mean, like I said, NBA ba NBA basketball, it first really got exciting. Um, it took off in the 1980s, you know, when Magic Johnson and Larry Bird hit the league. You know, a lot of people 
just credit them with saving the NBA. You know, some others would say Michael Jordan saved the NBA. You know, but whatever you think on that one too. I think Magic and Larry Bird, they brought it to people's attention because they want to see the arrival. When Mike came, he just took it to another level. You know, I mean, and like I said in the 80s, you know, you had Magic, you had Larry Bird. You had Isaiah Thomas, you know, you had Dennis Rodman when he was rookie and looked normal. You know, you had you had Clyde the Glide Drexler, you know. Of course you had his airness himself, Michael Jordan. You know, I mean, these guys showed up every day. You also had Patrick Ewing, I'm sorry, Pat. They showed up every day and put it all on the line and gave it their all to 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 win. You know what I'm saying? You know, you saw things like Larry Bird taking shots that like no man ever hit before. Isaiah Thomas being able to go anywhere on the court with the ball that no other man could do. Michael Mike getting up higher than any man could ever get. Clyde just slamming it down with authority, you know. Patrick Ewing just dominating the paint. Magic leading the, sh the, the Lakers Showtime fast break, you know. And the list goes on and on, you know. Yeah, Dominique Dawkins, I'm sorry, the human highlight reel. How can I leave him out? He just did some things in the air, too, you know. Yeah, Spud Webb, who won the 1986 contest, who was a little taller than me, you know, at 5'7". The NBA was a force to be reckoned with in the 80s and a force to be reckoned with in the 90s, you know, because the 90s hit, I mean, Charles Barkley hit the league in the late 80s, but, you know, that's when Sir Charles, you know, he, he was with this. I'm talking about when he was with the 76 and not with... The Suns, uh huh, bloody y'all probably won it, how I remember that. I'm old enough to remember that, you know. You had the the Bulls doing their first championship run. I'm not talking about the last championship run like most of you remember. I'm talking about the Bulls when Jordan had Paxton, Cartwright, Horace Grant, and Pippen. Yo, 91 through 93 when he got his first three rings. Then you had the other other uh Bulls three peat when it was him it was him, Harper, Lonely. Rodman and Pippen once again, you know. But I'm saying, you know, we saw all kind of things. You know, we saw the Bulls go on a 72 to 10 record one year. You know, you saw things like you saw Reggie Miller coming to Madison Square Garden in New York City, make a three pointer, steal the ball, come back out, hit another pre three pointer. That's like six points within five seconds. You know, the boys showed up to play. It was on their mind. Then we fast forward to two thousands, and I'm not gonna say it's really started at the beginning of two thousand. I'll say right after the Lakers had that three peat from two thousand to two thousand two. That's when the NBA started to climb. You know, that's when you started seeing them hustle a little less. You know, rebound a little less. You know, I mean, fast breaks now. I look at fast breaks now, and they're jogging down the court. 